What's going on guys, I'm Anstey Maze, here with my review of the latest Pokemon Sun and Moon anime episode. Episode 81, Alola's Young Fire, Royal Ash's Birth. With that title now said though, get relaxed everybody, as I will now jump right into this episode review. So the episode begins off with the Mask Royale battling against a dude with Electrifier in the Royal Dome. However, seeing as his friends Magmortar interrupted this single battle, as Electrifier was about to faint, he got Electrifier disqualified instead as they were a team. And the Magmortar dude then challenges the Mask Royale to battle tomorrow, which he accepts due to playing this dirty trick on him. And after this, we then see the Mask Royale walk into his backstage room, and... Holy <laughs> Crook is the Mask Royale? Can't say I saw that coming! Oh my god, that's such a brilliant twist and changes everything. The poor dude even has to go with the classmates and brunette tomorrow to watch his own battle as they all agree to go. Which in return the next day actually, it led to hilarious scenes of Krukri trying to live his double life. Oh, it was very spectacular. When he finally got himself together though, a group known as the Revengers then play a dirty trick on him by attacking Incineroar in the dark before his battle against this Magmar to be gone. And Ash's Soraka, outraged by this, jumps into the ring and attacks the Magmortar who pitched in, and because of this, Magmortar became embarrassed and wanted to battle against Toraka too. So, once Borgen arrives, the Revengers leader, also hello, I see he got bailed out of prison, then comes up with the idea for Magmortar and Electrifier to battle against Kukri and Ash, which they accept, making this a tag team battle where the Pokemon attack each other to get a chance to hurt each other. And by the way, Borgen is here because he wants to buy the Battle Royale Dome. You know, that kind of cliche plot. But before we actually see the battle take place, Krukri then gives Ash a mask for himself so he can become a Mask Royale himself, which was such an endearing touch. After this, indeed the battle happened, which everything was pretty good to be honest, along with some comedy. The Revengers still tried to cheat their way to victory though, by making the other guys grab the Pokemon outside the ring. But Ash and Krukri still managed to overcome this, with Torka even learning revenge at one point, which finished off both the main Pokemon pretty much. That's amazing power. However, after this, the rest of the Revengers that tried to cheat, jump into the ring to make sure they win, and get revenge for Magmortu and Electivire. But instead, they got Z-moved by Krukri, finishing them all off. And finally, Borgen being the only one left, then sends out his Pangoro, which legit got one hit KO'd by the cat Pokemon. Borgen and his gang then leave him for Royal Dome, while everybody cheers about the Royal Duo's great work, which indeed it was very great, and very satisfying to see them overcome the dirty tricks, even inspiring others to battle in the Battle Royale one day. The episode then ends off with Kukri coming back as himself, with everybody questioning super hard where he went, and why it took so long. Damn, I still can't get over that twist earlier on. Nobody would have saw that coming. Anyway, with that story now said though, let's now move on to my overall thoughts regarding this episode. So firstly, it was just fun all around, and usually I'm not interested in wrestling, but I guess I got a little into it now because of this episode. However, it was just way too fun not to, you know, as all the action we saw overall was good, kept me wanting to see what happens next, it was even pretty amusing to witness the classic face heel dynamics commonly found in wrestling just making an appearance in Pokemon, and finally, although we all knew our protagonists would win, it still had me cheering for their side to win against the Revengers too, which you know, people interested in wrestling usually cheer for one side only, so that's another good example of how much I got into this episode. Of course though, this episode didn't just deliver on the fun factor, but also give us Toraka learning revenge, which I'm pretty sure nobody saw this coming. And before somebody now comments that we did, <laughs> but it was so unexpected to me, as of course if you saw my previous discussion slash breakdown, you would know that I thought the move Toracat would learn would be Fire Punch, due to the fire we saw around one of its paws, and only one paw having an emphasis. Despite Toracat not even learning this move until it evolves, but we've also seen many Pokemon learn moves they shouldn't do until they evolve within the anime, so I was pretty confident that I was right. But nope, instead we got Revenge, which was a nice twist, as Toracat now finally has another move that isn't a fire type, so there's more variety. The actual concept of the move, aka taking hits and dealing double damage back to the opponent, is just a cool concept anyway. And finally, it looked incredible as the creators decided to portray this move by using flames, instead of just a normal fighting type animation we would usually see on a fighting type move. Perfect twist! Not to forget too that Toracat's actual focus in this episode was splendid, as we barely get to see a battle in my opinion. 
Back in the day, Ash just always used Lycanroc and Rowlet, which left this Pokemon who had such a great build up to his capture, get wasted pretty much. But I'm glad that now we're in the second season, and yes I refer to dub seasons, anyway I'm just glad it got more focus for this season given the much needed development it needed. Hopefully though, Rowlet will come back to shine as it hasn't really gotten any development whatsoever in this series. So yeah. Finally, for Torah Cat's focus though, we also got to see a deeper insight into Torah Cat's characteristics, which is its good sense of justice, which was heartwarming to see, aka it's helping out in Sunnyroll because the opponents were playing dirty tricks. So yeah, overall as you can see, I'm happy that Torah Cat has this new move and it can even open up many opportunities in the future for epic moments. Plus, its actual character is making me admire it even more. Seeming as I just mentioned those opponents though, let's talk more about them, shall we? You know, they're the very cliche bad guys, but I think that's why I like them, and even want the heroes to utterly beat them in a battle. <laughs> in fact, much like Revenge, I'm pretty sure none of us saw Borgen returning. I legit thought he would only be a character of the day back in episode 70, but here we are in the present day, seeing his latest scheme, which is kind of refreshing to see a villain character of the day make a return. He is also quite enjoyable. However, despite all of this, I can't help but also think at the same time, Folly Free saw Team Skull members battle against the Royal Duo instead, it would have made for a cooler episode. As it makes perfect sense to me for the Grunts to battle in this dome, I can even help for the build up to Guzma, if we ever see him, which I'm pretty sure we will. But eh, that didn't happen, and like I said, at least the villains for this episode were still likeable. Although I do hope in the future, we will see Lana and Lily enter the stone ring, as we were both very interested in competing in one, which is very surprising, but also very hype inducing. Please do it Pokemon, it would be so awesome. In fact, if you think about it, this is even more evidence that Lily might just become a normal Pokemon trainer, aka battling as many other Pokemon trainers as possible. Oh my god, if she enters the league, she'll be hated. My poor cinnamon roll. <laughs> I don't think that will happen though. And regardless of that though, that's the majority of my thoughts on this episode now stated. However, as always, the things I said during the storytelling section will also count towards why I like this episode, such as the comedy. Regardless, let's just finally move on to the animation and music aspects we got in this episode. Firstly for the animation, it looked great throughout the whole thing, however I can't really think of any highlights on the top of my head that isn't the scene with saw and the revenge animation like I stated earlier. So I guess there's barely anything which is disappointing. But hey, at least every other factor for this episode was quite superb. In fact, the music we hear was quite fitting, such as the champion theme and battle royale theme, which as always too, have been so epic to listen to. With everything I've said in this video though, I have decided to give this episode a rating of 7 out of 10. Yes, I barely said anything bad about this episode, however as always, there's been better. But I feel like this number is absolutely perfect for everything we got to witness. However, let me know in the comments down below if you agree or if you have different opinions on this episode. I love to hear and I'll respect them as always. And if you respected this review, then be sure to show that by leaving a like and subscribe for future Pokemon content. It helps out a ton. You'll also become a member of the Entity Squad. For now, this is Entity Maze, signing out. Thank you for watching. Oh, P.S. There's no episode next week, so I'll be releasing a different kind of review for next week, which will be the XY series. Stay tuned.